Hello everyone. Good afternoon. So today we have with us uh, Ayushi Sachdeva. She she has more than five years of experience in pricing of general insurance products across the U.S. markets. Uh, she she joined as a fresher with AIG Bangalore, and currently she holds a managerial position with EXL Gurgaon. She has cleared a total of eleven exams, and she'll be appearing for her next exam in the April attempt, which is in two months. So she will be discussing today with us uh, important IFOA uh, updates on CPD and CPD, uh, and will be a really insightful session. Uh, so she will be uh, discussing all the points through a PPT. And if you all have any questions in between the session, you can uh, write it down in the chat box. And later on, once uh, she finishes her points, you all can uh, discuss your doubts. You can unmute yourself and you can discuss your doubts. Okay, I'll just share the PPT, and the mic is all yours. I thank thank you so much, <coughs> uh, Shivangi. Uh, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ayushi. Uh, as Shivangi just introduced, uh, uh, I. Uh, before i think we begin with the session uh, can uh, like ha can i have a quick idea of how many of you are student members and how many of you are working professionals like you can just write it on the chat for me to i think we can have a poll i think we can have a quick poll so i'll just uh, start a quick poll you all can answer the poll Okay, so I've published the poll. You all can just quickly vote so that Ayushi can know. So basically, the idea is there are two things: CPD and PPD. There is for working professionals and there is for students. And I know every student will eventually uh, be a working professional, so it is important for us to have a greater clarity on where we are currently. Um, Shivangi, do we have the answers? Yes, I'll just stop poll. Okay, so we have sixteen. Uh, student members and seven working great so i think that gives me a much better clarity on how much and where to focus on so thank you everyone for your uh, inputs so uh, uh, shivangi if we can share the screen and we can start with cpd first so um, uh shivangi can we share the screen uh, the presentation yeah i'll just i'll just share in one minute yeah, i'll just share it ha theek hai so basically like i can start so both cpd and ppd are basically some of the professional requirements by the ifoa for both its student members and for its professionals to meet so uh, while cpd 
i think cpd uh, shivangi cpd so cpd will start with cpd because that is something uh, which is uh, which does not have any uh, non disciplinary actions like any disciplinary consequences however having said that both of them are equally important for an actual student or member to meet that so i will start with cpd first okay so you can probably make a note because both the presentations are exactly in the same format so you can easily distinguish between cpd and ppd and honestly there is so much information on the website that we are lost but there are just two to three very important details that we need to know and fulfill every year every cpd year and every ppd year which we will eventually uh, see what these years are so starting with cpd so cpd is continuing professional development uh this is in a layman's term this is just an attempt by the ifoa for its working professional uh students to uh, basically ensure that they are doing something towards the profession outside of their work so it is so as the word says continuing professional development it's a continuous attempt so that you gain something out of what you're doing out of of the work which will help you in gaining the professional benefit and for your overall career development this is something which ifoa only expects you to do outside of the work and provide them with a record just as simple as that so what is cpd i've explained that continuous benefit a continuous professional uh, development so ongoing to gain professional benefits out of your outside of your professional work and for your overall career development who i so, think i missed some so as i said uh uh who so who is as so according to the official language of ifoa it is only the members doing technical actual work there are three exclusions to the same uh, which is student members that is students who are only writing exam and are not yet uh, working with the company uh, non practicing a uh, status and certain listed society members because that society follows their own separate scheme so those are not allowed so and for non practicing status it could be like uh, like retired people or people who've taken a pause in their uh, want to take a pause in their scheme due to say any illness covid personal reasons or probably parental leave etc so student members non practicing status and some listed society members are exempted from uh, these three uh, from the cpd scheme i know most of you are students here so for the students uh, so ifoa uh, ifoa mostly provides you with an option for an application called non practicing application so while for the last two categories non practicing status and listed society members you are required to submit that application uh, student members are not required to do that because that is implied so although you are eligible for an exclusion you are not obliged to apply for that non practicing status because you are a student and ifoa knows it so uh, these are the exclusions student member non practicing and listed society and all the working seven working people that we have on the call it is mandatory for you to do something outside of the work and record it on the ifoa portal to let ifoa know that you're doing something out of uh, your professional work um so yeah that's all next slide okay when so when uh, so when we say cpd year cpd year for every every member is 1 september to 31st august so 1 september of every year to 31st august you can probably write a note because there is a lot of overlapping information between cpd and ppd so a uh, cpd year is basically 1 september to 31st august how so um basically so what exactly needs to be done in cpd we know the idea why ifoa introduced the scheme they basically want you to do something outside of the work and something outside of your writing exams so that is why they want to continuously improve on your uh, professional uh, 
trajectory but what to do so you basically when you log into your account you have to go to your my cpd section and therein you have to record 15 cpd hours uh, in an in a cpd year so uh, so 15 hours so there are three things in each cpd and bpd so three things in cpd are are they are 13 plus 2 plus reflective discussion so i will go uh, into each of these three uh, segments so 15 hours of cpd plus reflective discussion 15 is split into two parts 13 plus 2 so you have to uh, uh, submit 13 normal cpd hours now those cpd hours can be acquired uh, by some of the sessions that your officers conduct or by watching some of the recorded or live IFOA conferences or telling them that you've read the actual magazine or anything that you've done outside of your work, you have to record 15 hours for each CPD year for them to know. So this 15 hours, uh, in this 15 hours, two hours of professional skills training is mandatory. So professional skills training is just a different segment or a different uh, skill that they want uh, you to uh, inculcate, which is just uh, so on the IFOA website, you will find some of the trainings and courses for professional skills training. Other than that, any training that uh, any real time experience at your workplace, which gives you an ethical challenge. So you can also record that of like equivalent to two hours so 15 mandatory hours of a uh, cpd every cpd year need to be recorded by the member so this is the basics and the only requirement of cpd that is required by every technical or working professional to be done by the students so uh, I think I will pause here uh, for any questions because then it will be too much information. So like if there are any questions or comments, we can take that. Yes, Shrest. You said uh, the thing that we can be penalized, we cannot be penalized for uh, CPD. What did you mean by that? So I will cover that in the later section. So basically, uh, it is not a requirement which uh, currently it is not a requirement which will which IFO, which will be a hindrance to any of your exams or to your membership. Uh, but it is just an ongoing requirement, which I personally think might be a hindrance at the time when you are applying for associateship and fellowship. So non it, it will not have a disciplinary compliance means it will not stop you from not writing your exams or your membership status or your renew membership renewal status will be at a, a, you know risk you can do everything is ongoing but at the time when you have to apply for associateship or fellowship i am sure they will look at your back you know at your background or may penalize you or will might have to you might have to give a fine for the non-compliance so that is why uh, even the working community is meeting the CPD and PPD requirements because uh, it is not difficult to really say that 15 hours in an year be spent on something reading about actual articles. So, uh, so uh, although it does not, it will not stop you from writing exams. Um, so, all of the uh, IFOA schemes, the word they use, CPD schemes use the word should. They don't say must. So should is basically they believe that the members are doing it and uh, there is no non-compliance and they are not poking into each of your lives to really give you records. Yes, Neharika. Uh, hi, Ayushi. So I know you haven't spoken about the PPD part yet, but... Uh, like within the PPD also, we have something called as the learning outcome, which is pretty similar to CPD. So in what way is that different? Like the things that I have logged under the learning outcome, which is also, you know, lunch in sessions or some kind of presentations. How is that different from CPD? Which They're is also overlapping. the same thing. So these, those two hours of learning outcome are very similar to these 15 hours of CPD. But since uh, 
that applies to both so ppd applies to every member like student non student this applies only to the working professional so for the student so for the working professional it could be overlapping so uh, sorry again a back question with that so uh, if, can i enter the same thing under the learning out outcome and also the same thing for cpd or does it have to be different um so there are just two hours of learning outcome that you are required to do so it so uh since even the ifoa official language says the exactly the same things for both the learning outcome and for cpd so i believe you can add that uh, but like they will do a regular audit of what you are writing so like it's always better to have agar kuch samajh nahi aa raha so you can do that but or agar ek point overlapping ho raha so you can do that but try to like not have exactly same copy pasted uh, ours every year and also as long as you can justify uh ki wo kyu kara and usme kya kiya and what was your learning outcome out of it so cpd basically they just want you uh to plan your eventual journey of becoming an associate and fellow uh in hand so basically if you will do all these extra curricular things pehle se so you will know that in which direction or in which domain you have to eventually want to work or where is the gap in the knowledge so uh so as long as you can prove your learning outcome i think they should be good um do we have any more questions Okay I think moving to the next slide Ma'am there's a question in the chat box uh Um So can somebody tell me the question Can somebody oh chat box Okay Uh what is the format of submitting cpd what details should be submitted uh so if you i think if you log in to your uh i don't remember exactly uh, so if you log in to your uh, domain basically there are four standard requirements by the cpd uh there is an activity description there is a learning outcome there is a date that you performed and uh, there is the number of hours that you have to input and then there is a checklist that yes this is supervised or this is approved by my supervisor so this is common for both cpd and ppd you have to tell them that uh, what a very summarized uh, version of what was the task then what was the learning outcome the number of hours spent on which date was it completed and just to acknowledgement that yes this has been supervised now that acknowledgement holds value because later on if they come back and ask you uh, to show proofs or the proof of a written acknowledgement of your line manager saying that yes this task was done by under me so you should have those supports ready so this scheme cpd scheme is a very new scheme i think it it is a 2020 update since the inception of ifoa so this is not changing any time sooner and before 2020 we were expected to record the learning outcome and also upload the proofs like uh, scan copies of the proofs now after 2020 they don't expect us to submit it but they uh, they want to they want us to take it and make sure ki like we are doing it that's all uh harshita no it will not affect your marks uh shrest is my volume better now it's still a little less um okay i think i'll try to speak a little louder who will be the supervisor so a uh, supervisor uh, by supervisor i mean uh, like if there is a uh, 
any uh, task that you have performed uh, with your team or under your manager or under any supervisor at your workplace again since this is only for the working professionals so or probably if you've done a course then you would have a certification or an acknowledgement letter or a letter of completion or so even at i have seen personally at my workplace so you write there is a proper format of how you can get a supervisor uh, approval so you just take a print out and ask your manager to sign it and then upload it to ifoa that is one of the standard ways in the industry not a signed letter but just a declaration and your manager should sign it or otherwise any uh, evidence of complete certificates or uh, lunch and learn sessions could be so whosoever is organizing it can actually tell that yes this person attended the lunch and learn session and then if you write your learning outcome of that lunch and learn session then and if you are able to justify in case an audit happens i think that should be uh, more than sufficient basically record keeping now is an optional activity but that does not mean that you can write anything because if they come back you you should be in contact or you should have those evidence ready that you did something yeah i think uh, that's all we can move to the next slide i think we are done with all the questions okay yeah i think this is again something that we've covered this is optional but preferred ifoa now has a portal called uh, um i think optional record keeping something like that wherein you so if you don't want to store it and you think that you will lose all the records you can upload it it's an optional activity but it is preferred uh because again as i said later on if they do a random audit then you will have those records ready so it's optional but preferred um next slide okay optional and mandatory so two opposite words together uh, as i said both cpd and ppd have three major requirements two of them are mandatory requirements one is a ongoing or a one time requirement for cpd we said that we need a uh, 15 uh, cpd hours which is 13 plus 2 now this is the third requirement which is the reflective practice discussion so reflective practice discussion is basically uh, again something there is no proof of it uh, but uh, ifo requires every member to have a discussion with an appropriate person so i'm just quoting the official words appropriate person in any cpd or to to have a discussion yeah to have a discussion with an appropriate person so basically discussion related to what now they want that whatever you have learned so after you have filled in your 15 learning outcomes this discussion comes into picture and they only want you to have a discussion with an appropriate person about what all you learned from those 15 hours yeah yeah what is your opinion in any one of the learnings if you think anything is different so basically a two hours of uh, reflective discussion in any cpd year is required appropriate member could be anyone who has the knowledge of your industry who could be your peers could be your colleagues could be your friends could be your tutor or if you can't find anyone then ifoa volunteers so you basically just basically want to uh, gather what you learned or what could have changed uh uh like what is your opinion and what have you learned or what do you think how has this learning shaped your idea of your future planning of the career because you may think that over the learning i realized that i have more inclination towards gi or i do not have an inclination towards gi and i want to go towards pension so i think this is just that discussion again something which can't be uh, validated but since september 2021 ifoa will randomly pick students to have those mandatory reflective practice discussions with the ifoa panel member so uh, this is something very very new 
I have not come across anyone who has been picked for those uh, practice discussions. But again, uh, we have on the link which is provided on the website, which sir can also share later. Uh, this basically has some of the sample videos of in case you are picked, what all questions will you be asked and uh, how to go about it. The, in that, so I saw those videos and the idea is just for them. They just want to be convinced that those learning outcomes are legit and that it is helping you shape your career. So yeah, although this can't be validated, but if you're picked, you will have to do a practice discussion with the IFOA panel. So yeah, that's all. Uh, next slide. Okay, if not met, something that we have already discussed, no disciplinary consequences. Uh, IFOA only requests you to abide by the actuaries code which basically says to not enter into any unethical uh, practices and uh, especially in these pandemic times for ease, for clear communication, for knowing the difference between technical and non-technical audience and uh, not using jargons, not using abbreviations. So, so yeah, you can read, it's just a two-pager document of actuaries code. So it only says that as long as you're abiding by the actuaries code, CPD will not have any disciplinary consequences. But I think that at the time when you apply for your associateship, they will look at your background and that may be penalized. Also, every year when you become a, a working professional as per IFOA, Every time you uh, submit your uh, membership renewal fee, they ask you to certify that your CPD requirements are met during the year. So I think if you're doing it and that is non-compliant, it could have a impact later. So nothing that they are doing right now, but you may have to just pay fine at the time of any application. So that is why not recommended. And it is not too much of an effort to spend 15 hours or to record 15 hours every year. So it is recommended for the working professionals to do both CPD and PPD. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think with this, I think we've come towards the end of CPD. To summarize it, uh, working professional 15 hours plus reflective discussion, no record keeping and uh, just be sure that everything is uh, legit and uh, there is something that you've learned out of those experience so yeah that's all any questions for cpd yes neharika Oh, oh, sorry, I don't have a question. I forgot to put my hand down. Okay, yeah. Shresht. So last year I had re recorded PPD but not CPD. So in, in that too, I recorded the types of things done and all that learning learning outcomes. So I wanted to ask, how is that different from what we have to input in the CPD? Um, Shresht, are you working or are you a student? I, I actually interned last year. So I had, um, therefore I had actually inputted the uh, things in in the ppd but uh, so i was not working but i was interning somewhere as an actual uh, intern so that is why that is the learning outcomes that i put in there but i did not put for any cpd but um, as you said that this is also a learning outcome so how is uh, this then different from uh, the thing that we actually put in ppd uh, you mean ppd yeah, so I, I, I had inputted PPD last year, but I had not inputted CPD. So uh, in, in PPD too, I had inputted the learning outcomes that I um, actually learned from the internship. But uh, I wanted to ask that how is the inputting that we have to do in CPD? Uh, what are the different things that we have to, or is it both the same in ter terms of the things that we have to input in the CPD? No, so PPD basically is very structured. So we will talk about PPD as well. PPD is very structured. They have a list of requirements. They give you a list of competencies that you have to meet. It is, of course, the form, the two hours of formal learning hours, as Neharika mentioned, is something which is overlapping with the 
CPD, wherein uh, yeah, so those are two overlapping things. But PPD is both personal and professional development. So they want so it can't be open ended both CPD and PPD because there are certain skill set, ethical uh, knowledge, business knowledge that they want every student to inculcate before they become associate and fellows. So uh, I can say that formal learning hours are overlapping to CPD, but PPD itself is very different. Of course, the audience is also different. Uh, but PPD has a say we they have a structure, they have a syllabus. Usi mein se we have to pick and we have to do something towards it. So once we will see that list, we know that we usi list mein se hume inculcate karna because that is what IFO wants us to inculcate those skills. So two hours of formal learning are stretched are overlapping to CPD. And yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm so, clear. And I was just saying that, um, so just like you said that your uh, status internship, uh, I'm not sure. I think you should reach out to the uh, membership team uh, because uh, IFOA says that if your status changes halfway through the year, then your requirements are also updated on your portal on a pro rata basis. So uh, I think you can reach out to them if you if they uh like want you to input CPD as well for your internship period. But in my knowledge, uh, I don't think it will be required because they want full time actual technical work. Um, so no minimum years for CPD, CPD is ongoing. It is continuous throughout your membership. You have to make sure that you are doing something outside of your work because ultimately when we have all the papers and we have a job, IFOS still want us to contribute to the profession and contribute to our knowledge, attend the actual conclave or present or add to the profession. So there is no minimum maximum. That's a continuous process. Can we add internship details in CPD when we are students? I, I think that is, as I said, I think you should reach out to the membership team because uh, they say that your uh, if your status changes, then they will update your portal halfway through the year on a pro rata basis, but um, you can confirm it with them. Great. So uh, CPD, as I said, is just uh, outside of work and they want you to learn continuously outside of your work, outside of your profession. Uh, PPD, which is personal and professional development, is the real thing that we are doing, is the real information that is adding to our career. And it's something that you may again not want to keep the records, but something that is a part of your qualification. So as much as the CT series or the CA series or becoming associate and fellow is important for an actually uh, meeting these PPT requirements is equally a part of your qualification. Uh, if we move to the next slide, thank you. Uh, yeah, so it is equally a part of your actual qualification. As I said, CPD will only give you an insight of what you want to do or where should I focus. PPD is for all students and for all uh, working members. And there are certain requirements, which again, uh, IFO wants you to. There are again some requirements that you have to add. But this is something what you're actually working on, like real time work experience needs to be inputted uh, on your PPD portal. And uh, now this not having PPD will definitely have disciplinary consequences on both your exams and your student membership. So who, uh, as I said, for everyone, for all students, for all working professionals, for everyone who is aiming to become uh, associate or fellow. When, uh, okay, now PPD year and CPD year. CPD year was very clear, which is uh, 
one September to thirty first August standard for every uh, member in IFOA is PPD year. PPD year is something like your uh, admission. It 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 is unique to every person and it depends on your date of admission. Say you got admitted to IFOA on January twentieth. Uh, 2020 so january 20 2021 to 19 jan 2022 so basically every year jo bhi tumhara membership date hoga starting that date to an annual period will be your ppd year so ppd year you can't say sabke paas so ifo usually sends notification that your ppd deadline date is approaching now and essay like at office we all used to discuss ki email aaya email aaya but then uh, also that process was not very refined earlier but eventually when they have formally uh, formulated a scheme so ppd year is basically your membership date every year starting that date to an annual period is your annual ppd deadline and we have to make sure that those records everything that we are doing towards ppd is done within the ppd year okay moving to the next slide how okay so like cpd there are three requirements in cpd two mandatory one ongoing again for ppd three requirements two mandatory one ongoing um, so two mandatory requirements is that every member is required to meet a minimum requirement of three ppd credits and two formal learning hours i will repeat in every ppd year three uh, ppd credits and two formal learning hours so uh, what exactly is 3 ppd credits uh so if you log in to your membership account and go to my ppd uh you will see you will see uh, there is a your date of your membership and you will also see your ppd year so it will it will give you the range of the year where your ppd year lies and there will be four sections so there are uh, Uh, for the four sections will be effective communication problem solving and decision making and professionalism and then there will be a fourth section called formal learning uh, hours so these four sections are basically divided into two which is 3 plus 1 and as i said ppd has a required structure has a required syllabus of what of what ifo wants you to achieve or want to uh, build your skills on so um, when you will go to my ppd as i said you will have your ppd year you will have these four sections so every year you have to gain three ppd credits how will you get these credits is ifoa has given you these three options of effective communication professionalism and decision making and they want ki tum usme ja ke koi so when you uh, select on effective communication so usme there is a list of uh, objectives or there is a list of tasks that you can do in order to achieve effective communication ka parameter in order to so you can meet that effective communication ka parameter similarly problem solving and decision making if you will click ki this is the section where i want to input my uh, ppd ka uh, whatever i have done so it will give you a list so it is not ki you have you can randomly write that i did a udemy course ye sab nahi they have given you an option so effective communication mein so there are more than there are 10 15 options under each of these core competencies usi mein se you have to pick one and usi mein se then whatever they are required to do which we will also cover later say effective communication effective communication will have a uh, 10 to 15 options for you say usme likha hoga i demonstrated a, a technical work to a non technical audience i made a, a a report for a regulatory body so bahut sare options honge which will convey that you used the skill of effective communication similarly professionalism mein bhi bahut sare options honge so every year from these three core competencies 
you have to pick one of the uh, options that are available and make sure that you get three credits. Now, how do we know that three pure ho gaye? So, uh, unhone jo hume uh, options de rakha hai, uh, IFO hai has also assigned the number of credits next to each of them. So, credits is basically how much importance IFO is giving to each of those competencies or each of these options. So, it could be ki kisi ka credit 0.5 hai. Kisi ka 1 hai, kisi ka directly 3 hai because that is very important. So, that is just the importance that IFO is giving to each of those uh, core competencies. And, aisa ho sakta hai that you do one of the core competencies which is problem solving and decision making. Usi ka tumne ek three credit wala cheese kar liya. So yeah, that meets your minimum criteria for the year for PPD and you don't have to do any further. It could be that you do half, one, two, three and a half. Chalega, that also works. You have to meet a minimum of three PPD credits every year. Although it is recommended that you do at least one from each of the three core competencies. But at the end of the day, you only have to make sure that saal mein three credits are earned under uh, PPD. So this is one part. Uh, the second part is formal learning hours as, as we've already discussed. Formal learning hours mein saal ka two hours. Just two hours hume include karna hai. Now that could be any formal learning in the form of any uh, like if there was any business meeting, any business learning sessions or uh, there was again any lunch and learn or IFOA ka ya uh, IAI ka any recorded or live session that you attend or seminars or actual conflict that again as I said CPD and this two hours of formal learning are overlapping you may or may not want to copy paste it but I would not recommend so uh, yeah so these three PPD credits plus two hours is the only requirement of PPD every PPD year which will be unique to you that you have to uh, meet so uh, we will also go Neharika like can I complete it first and then we can uh, go with the question is it okay yeah yeah sure okay yeah I just want to cover these mandatory skills first so if so yeah so PPD is just uh, three PPD credits and two hours of formal learning so if we move to the next slide, yeah, this is how uh, the, this is just a snapshot of one of the portals. So if you go and add a PPD record, you will be given with these four options, which is effective communication, professionalism, and uh, problem solving and decision making and formal learning. So from the first three, you have to meet three credits every year and formal learning hours have to be two every ppd year as i said activity description uh, both activity description and learning outcome have a maximum character limit so there is only a limited amount that you can write but what you are writing is more important ifoa wants activity description to be very concise to be very summarized to just give a high level overview of what was done who was the audience that's all then there is a date that must be included then there is a learning outcome now learning outcome again has a character limit but now this has to be very descriptive this has to be descriptive and this has to be self-reflective as in what were the outcomes what were the mistakes taken make what were the uh, mistakes made or what is it that you can do better these are all or it's not that you have to put everything in the learning outcome but what was the outcome and is may say kuch bhi like any uh, mistakes that you realize anything that you can do better any feedback that you got from your manager or your personal opinion as to agar koi course karai ya seminar karai if there is any personal opinion that you want to put uh, that is also comes under learning outcome and then there is discuss with supervisor so um, once you select effective, I think I missed this. Once you select effective communication, immediately uh, activity description se pehle 10, 15 skills ki list aadegi. So you have to select that. Then automatically you will be allocated with a credit 
एंड देन बाकी का फिल करना है सो जब सारी चीजें सिलेक्ट हो जाएंगी एंड यू विल एड इट you will see that one or three credits being reflected on your profile so this is how the portal looks like yes so i think i will uh, yeah so this is just one of the examples of uh, the activity description which says that i assisted in drafting ki maine kya kiya the actual uh, valuation report for regulatory purposes i researched appropriate regulatory guidelines and standards and check the content that's all what did i do how did i do very high level no jargons no abbreviations and this is something very generic that even a non actual person can understand so it has to be summarized without any jargons uh i think this is just uh, uh this slide is basically just telling you about the description of the learning outcomes that learning out outcome should be very detailed should reflect what went well and what did not and anything different that you think that we have already covered so yeah i think i will pause here before we move to the mandatory competencies because these are the two things only that are required by any member student or non student of ifoa to fill three ppd credits and two formal learning hours every year So yeah, that's all. Niharika, we can take your question now. Okay, if we do not have the question, we can move to the next slide. Um. Hi, sorry. I I have two questions actually. Okay. I was telling. Uh, suppose if um, like I need a minimum of three credits in a year, but uh, is it okay if I only fill out to two of those categories and not all three? Like I need like a total of fifteen for associateship, right? But in that, if I've only filled out of two categories like throughout, then is that okay? Yes. Or do they want all three? Yes, it's recommended that you cover all of them. So there are multiple questions to what you just. uh like ask can you repeat the question because there are multiple parts to it yeah no so i got that part that in a particular year now for example i have only filled out for two of them um say uh, effective communication and problem solving i haven't filled out for professionalism but i've reached my minimum ppt credits for the year so that is done but for associateship i need a total of 15 credits so in that it, should i have all three categories filled at at least some point or is it okay if i've missed out any one of them so uh, i will come to associateship in these mandatory competencies so these mandatory competencies talk only about what you need to do for a ppd before applying for associateship so that is a different question but for any year any ppd year where you're not applying for associateship even one category is sufficient although it is recommended that you do one for each of the competencies but one is sufficient but before you apply so second part of your question says associateship now that is something where there are mandatory competencies even if you have done just one category throughout your years uh, these mandatory competencies need to be filled need to be completed with the records before you apply for associateship so we will cover these mandatory competencies but to answer your question in any year even one core competency with three credits is sufficient but before applying for associateship there are four mandatory competencies that you have to have to meet okay got it and i have one more question now for example i fill up my ppd credits and it showed that i've done four but is there a chance that you know it doesn't get accepted for some reason uh, is it possible that it can again come back and i might have to fill it up again so since you said four there are chances ki ek reject bhi ho gaya tab bhi three minimum meet ho jayega so in that case they might not come back but if you've just done three and usme se ek ya do are non compliant there are regular audits happening and they want to make sure that the standard and the accuracy of what you have written is up to the mark and obviously kuch bhi random and unreliable likhna where which is जो बहुत इजीली उनकी नजरों में आ सकते हैं ऑब्वियसली दे विल कम बैक टू यू देर आर रैंडम इट इज नॉट दैट दे आर नॉट चेकिंग इट देर आर देर आर ऑडिट्स हैपनिंग इन एवरी प्रोफाइल फॉर द सीपीडी एंड पीपीडी सीपीडी नॉट एज मच 
but ppd yes so uh, ppd as i said is a part of your qualification agar 12 paper chahiye to ppd bhi chahiye so it has to be up to the standards and uh, later on associate trip apply karte time they are reviewing everything that you have uh, inputted for cpd and ppd okay thank you so yeah thank you niharika for the question we were moving to mandatory competencies so a good background so moving to the next slide yeah so mandatory competencies these are the four competencies which you do not have to do it every year this is a one time requirement before you apply for the associate trip so if you see these are the four mandatory competencies you can't do any two any three uh, you have to do all four of them and if you see in charo mein all three of them are covered effective communication problem solving and professionalism there are two things for professionalism uh, which is why because they want to give special emphasis on two parts of the professionalism because actual is not just about clearing exams and doing technical analysis it is also about effective communication and representing the profession so uh, i think the first talks about effective communication second is problem solving and decision making within professionalism there is you again as the name suggests basic ethics and standards of actuary and second is the importance of peer review i think that is something that when you will like move to the corporate you will realize that that is usually which is skipped or not uh, you know in the interest of time or in the interest of criticality level ya deadline aa rahi hai to fir peer review nahi kiya i think that is something which ifa ifo wants to highlight the importance of peer review and uh, yeah and that actually is in their uh, you know when when they are conducting themselves they should hold equal importance of professionalism ethics and peer review so isliye these are all mandatory competencies which before you apply for associate ship they want you ki aap ye kar chuke ho like you have experienced you have learned you have recorded it and if we move to the next slide it says that if these mandatory competencies are not met your application for associate trip will be rejected or it will be sent back because your mandatory competencies are not completed so yeah very very important uh also another thing to add is um, we can move to the next slide because we've covered half of it yeah and the next point is this is as i said mandatory competency is just to a uh, one time requirement so if you me- met these four requirements at the time of applying for associate ship you do not have to apply it for at the time of fellowship so it's just a one time requirement but mandatorily to be done before associate ship um i think next slide so th- these are the tables which is which are basically summarizing what we have so far learned in ppd so there are two tables the tables at the top is for all the members who joined uh, ifoa before 2 january 2020 19 and the second table is the one who joined after 2019 so uh, and i know most of us will fall in the first category so quickly going through that table the last two columns our minimum credit per year 3 year we know minimum hours of formal learning 2 hours every year we know then uh uh so basically this is ongoing okay so i'm just covering the associate trip uh, row right now so if you apply for associate trip ifoa wants that every year you are doing every year you are meeting 3 uh, credits 2 formal learning hours uh at least number of credits is 10 in your account basically aisa ho sakta hai like if you do if you become associate in 3 years you will have 9 credits but you have to have minimum number of credits 10 in your account if you apply for associate trip and another very important requirement is the number of experience which is 12 months so they want that if you become an associate uh 
you should definitely have 12 papers you should definitely have the ppt requirements for every year met but you should also have worked in an organization for 12 months so similarly for fellowship uh, 3 years 36 months 20 minimum credits 3 min- i think 3 and 2 are again a uh, constant so yeah so i think this table again is available on the website as well or i think somebody can share the presentation and you can keep a hold or you can note it down so i think for the time being since we're all targeting associateship uh, we should just be aware of all the mandatory requirements and not miss anything even if anything is optional because they might penalize you or ask you for a fine if something's not completed at the time of applying for associateship yeah so this is the last uh, slide and we'll be done in another 2 minutes which is a uh, ppd being a mandatory requirement uh, so you will get emails from ifoa three time three reminders uh, before you are approaching your ppd deadline date one will be 60 days before the deadline date the other will be 30 days before the deadline date and one will be 7 days before the deadline date if you've met you will not get any notification but if you haven't so after 7 days you will not get so you have to do it yourself then non compliance measures as i said on your exam and on your membership as important as clearing clearing an exam ppd has to be met regular audit again um, regular audit is happening and definitely at the time of applying for associateship your uh, standards and quality of your answers would be verified and uh, yep again just like cpd uh, non practicing status also holds if due to some personal reason health issues or parental leaves you are also allowed uh, and exempted from ppd if you apply for the non practicing status i think with this uh, we have come towards the end of the presentation in the next slide we just have a link for the ppd page if you want to go through the boxes and the tables that we've covered um other than that i think we are good we have covered both cpd and ppd uh, cpd in one line is 15 uh, hours every ppd or and cpd uh, and pp sorry Uh, CPD is just fifteen hours every CPD year, and PPD is three credits plus two formal learning hours every PPD year. As simple. So yeah, I think with that, uh, I have come towards the end. And uh, if there are any questions uh, or any discussions, we can have that. Okay, I assume it's a no. So I think we are uh, good with the session. So thank you, everyone, for joining and taking our time. Thank you, ma'am.